We are talking about equality in the next Good News program. You don't want to miss it. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Living in the End Times Without Losing Your Mind. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s or watch the streaming videos for free. Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, this is Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are trying to wrap up a series that I've entitled Living in the End Times Without Losing Your Mind. We would invite you to go to our website and get the free download. You can have the entire teaching on this subject and it's been very practical. It's been fun for me to go through these different truths. Things that I really haven't had time to teach as I've traveled but uh, on this program we can kind of do what we want and it's been really really fun uh, to get into some of these different issues and we're going to talk about equality today but before I do that we welcome you to come to the website and leave an email leave a, a testimony even a criticism I guess if you want um, you know a lot of people like to talk about my shirts and I wore this one for you today if you want to comment on the shirts or or on the teaching or whatever uh, we'd love to hear from you I read all of the comments and love to see uh, you know what you have to say about the program uh, I want to go back here in this teaching on equality uh, I've, I made this statement and it's really true uh, we're talking about living in stressful times or living in the end times. And if it weren't for people, you wouldn't have hardly any stress in your life. If it was just you and God on the earth, things would be wonderful. But that wouldn't be uh, right and it would be lonely and it's not the way life is. So your stress is going to come from relating to other people, dealing with other people. And... Um, you know, that's just the way it is in life. Uh, people are going to cause situations, things are going to flare and things are going to happen. And one of the things that is causing a lot of division in our nation today and in our world is this subject of equality. And they're trying to legislate equality or they're trying to do it socially, make everybody equal. And, and my statement was, you know, in the body of Christ, that's already happened. Jesus has made everyone in the body equal. There is no inequality in the body of Christ. doesn't matter where you came from, where you were born, uh, how much money you make or don't make, whether you're educated or uneducated, what language you speak. There is equality in the body of Christ. Let me give you this scripture. Galatians 3.26 says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, a boy or a girl. It doesn't matter where you were born, what nationality you are. We're all sons of God. In other words, in the kingdom, we have equal authority access uh, we have the right to, to be heirs of God. We have equal, um, uh, just equality because we're all sons. We all relate to God as sons, not as stepsons, not as nephews or nieces, but we all relate to God the same way. And in that sense, we're equal. There is no difference between one, isn't that what the world's looking for? Isn't that what they're fighting for? They're all up in arms about? It's already true in the body of Christ. You are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have, as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female for you're all one in Christ Jesus. I just think that's beautiful. That is the equality that people, I guess, they're craving. They realize it, it, it's, it's necessary, it's important, but it just doesn't exist on the earth. As long as there are people, I mean, it starts in the nursery. You know, have you ever seen kids in the nursery? They fight over toys. They, they exclude one another. They have all kinds of, uh, of, of situations, contentions, strife, debates, arguing. And, and it's simply, you know, trying to get what belongs to them. Or I'm better than you, or you're worse than me, or you're better than me. And I'm, it's, just, it's just human nature. And, and division causes a lot of problems. And one of the greatest... Um, problems today that we see is gender inequality and people are fighting for this and I, I'll say again in the church and on earth God has made this 
right. He's made men and women equal. And you may not think that's so. You may have this old-fashioned traditional view of scriptures where the man is, you know, the in charge and the woman is subservient and some sort of lower class citizen. But that's just not the teaching that comes from the Bible. In the Bible, they're both winners. I want to talk about this relationship between men and women because it's become such a hot topic in our world today. And in, in Christ, in the church, in, even on earth, there are no winners and losers. There's, no, there's nobody that's better than the other one. They're both winners. And, and you could see this in Ephesians. Uh, in, in Ephesians chapter 5, and I want to read through here and give you several different scriptures from Ephesians 5 because he talks about men and women, as specifically husbands and wives. He says in verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. So he's really talking about how husbands are to love their wives. And then first, and then in verse 28, he says, So husbands ought to love their wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. No one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. Now that's the key here. Just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So, so you're, what you have here is Christ and the church. And there's so many things in life that are symbolic or symbols of, true, uh, of spiritual truths. And men and women, husbands and wives, are, are, are a symbol, of an earthly example of a heavenly truth. It's like two roles. And, and I want you to look at this differently. Maybe you thought, well, I'm a woman, so I'm just going to be uh, a second-class citizen. That's not the way the Bible teaches it. There are two roles here. There's the hero and the heroine. There's the lead role for the, for the man and the leading role for the woman. And both of them are winners. There, there's, no, there's no loser in this thing. Not if you do it God's way. Now, I know that life has and the world and sin has perverted both of these roles. And that's what we're dealing with. We're seeing people that don't want to be men and people that don't want to be women. They're trying to change their roles, reverse their roles, meet in the middle where there's just no femininity and no masculinity. And everybody's just sort of a blend. None of that is scriptural. It's scriptural to have these two co-equal roles, these two important roles. And really, if you look at it this way, it doesn't matter which role you play. If you were being picked to, to star in this, in this blockbuster movie, and they did a casting, and they said, now look, we have two roles, and, and we, want, we want to cast you as the hero, or we want to cast you as the heroine. Well, if you're the hero, uh, what is your role? Okay, your role would be you're going to give your life. You're going to come and sacrifice everything you have. You're going to work hard. You're going to focus. You're going to come to the earth or come on the scene. And every day you're going to live for the heroine. You're going to finally, you're going to be accused falsely. You're going to be beaten. You're going to be bloodied. You're going to be nailed to a cross. You're going to shed all of your blood. You're going to give your entire life to rescue the heroine. And when you're raised up, you're going to rescue the heroine and take her to another place and live together in heavenly bliss forever and ever and ever. That's your role. Now it's painful. And, and it's and it's brutal and it's going to take you're going to have to fully give yourself to this role. Say, so, well, what's the other role? Well, the other role is heroine. There's just two roles. It's heroine. You're going to be the leading lady. Well, what is my role? Well, first of all, we're going to open where you have been. Uh, you've been enslaved by a, a cruel master. And you've lost everything. You have no rights. You have no freedom. You're bound and you're doomed to a life of, of servitude and death. But the heroine's coming and he's going to come and pay the price and rescue you from your place of bondage, from your slavery. And he's going to save you with his life. It is a it's a powerful, compelling story. <laughs> there are no losers in this story. And the, the heroine's going to be rescued by the hero. 
and taken to another place. She's going to be freed from her master. She's going to receive his name, his wealth, his blessing, his favor, all of his attention. And she's going to end up having his father live in his home and be happily married forever and ever and ever. That's your role. Can you commit to that? Can you do that? And so then God translates that to husbands and wives. And he's telling husbands, do your part. Quit, quit going off script. Give your life for the wife. You're supposed to be the hero. Do what you can do. Give everything. Let all your attention be focused. One of the things that shocks me the most is you read Revelation. And, and you look at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the attention that the angels and those in heaven that are, that are observing this, this entire process, it's just like a wedding. The whole focus of heaven itself is on the bride. Look at the bride, the city come down from heaven. The, 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 the marriage of the lamb has come, the Bible says, and his wife has made herself ready. It's like a wedding and everybody stands up when the bride walks in. The groom, he's running around trying to find his spot and looking for all his guys. But it's all, it's all about the bride. All the attention is on the bride. And the same is true in heaven. The same is true with the Lord. He came to earth and all he was focused on was the church. The, all, all he wanted to do was help the church, give to the church, support the church, rescue the church, take the church to another place. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to come get you so you can be where I am. There are no losers in this. There are two roles, the hero and the heroine. And, and really, if, 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 an, if a director came in and he was casting for this, this major blockbuster and, and you applied, he would tell you who you're going to be. You, you don't get to choose. You could say, you know, I'd like to be the hero or I'd like to be the... But you, you get chosen for the part. And once you get chosen, you, you play the part. You go with the process because he's the director. He knows what he's doing. You're employed by him. He, he calls the shots. And I don't know why, you know, uh, I, I, I didn't choose to be a man and, and, and women didn't necessarily choose to be women, but we were born into that role. The problems that we face in the world today are that, at, that, that the roles have been abused and perverted by sin. Men have become not saviors, not heroes, but abusive and, and mean, and they've, um, they've abused their authority and their power. Women have, have, become, have become perverted by sin, and they don't want to, to, to serve or help or honor. Really, all he says to women is, is, is husband, uh, women, respect your husbands. Give honor to the husband as, as, as the church does to Christ. Honor and respect. And, and he tells husbands, love your wives. Give your life for them. Love them as your own flesh. Do to the wife what Christ has done for the church. What a, what a responsibility. Those are the roles we have. But in God's eyes and in God's setting, in God's kingdom, in God's economy, there's no winner or loser in this. They both win. The hero and the heroine, they're both stars. They're the star of the show. And, and, and whatever role you find yourself in, rejoice in it. The problems that we, that we get into in society is we try and undo or, or go against the, the nature, go against natural laws. You have, you have men who want to be women and you have women who want to be men and they've, they've, they've come against masculinity of any kind. You know, you need to be masculine to be a hero. You need to be masculine to win and, and to serve and to give and to protect and to provide. For, for the church, for the wife. And you need to be feminine to support and to honor and respect the husband. It's a beautiful thing when it's done properly. And I think some people in the world today have never seen the Lord and the church. They've never seen a, gotten a glimpse of the beauty of the interaction between the Lord and the church or a real husband and a real wife. And, and therefore they have no idea of what it's supposed to be and how good it could be. You know, if we just do things God's way, we'd realize we all win. There, there's no, you don't win at somebody else's expense. You don't go up by putting someone else down. It's totally opposite. We lay our lives down for each other so we can build the other one up. And in the end, we both win. And then God gets the glory.
Can you see that? Can you see how the world has tried to take these spiritual truths, what, what God and nature has provided, and, and, and they've perverted them, and it's become, it's become uh, some sort of an unnatural blend. It's not godly, and it's not best for humanity. The best way to live is to live according to the Word of God, according to the will of God. And he tells us here, let me just read a few of these scriptures. If you're a wife and you say, I don't know why I have to be a woman. Well, God created you that way. But look at what is supposed to happen. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. That's a tall order. That's a big command. And if you can't find a husband that will love you that way, don't find one. Don't settle. Don't get somebody that won't treat you this way. Now, nobody's perfect, and I'm not saying that, but, 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 uh, but really we ought to be striving for, for our biblical example. In, in verse 22, it says, Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord. In other words, you need to support your husband. If you will, he will give his life for you. And that's really what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a joint effort, and it's supposed to be a beautiful thing. You say, well, I, don't, I, I just don't, uh, I don't know what I am. Well, as Andrew Womack says, check your plumbing. It's not that difficult. Now, if, if, if you're offended by that, please send all of your letters to him uh, to complain because that's his quote. You can send your offerings to me, all your complaints to Andrew Womack. He said, check your plumbing. And that's true. It's not that complicated. The problem is that we don't want to stay in, in our role. If the director has chosen you to be a heroine, be a good one. Say, well, well, he's not very good. Well, you can't really control that, but you can be a good one. And if the, if the Lord has chosen you, the director, to be a, a, a hero, the man, be a good one. Work at it. Try to get better at it. You say, well, she doesn't really support me. You can't control that, but you can be the best man you could be and be uh, an example of what it is to be Christ, the, the Lord in the earth. And if we would strive to do that, we would live... And, and produce this, this, this motion picture where everybody wins and everybody lives happily ever after. Isn't that what we want? <laughs> we, God set the stage for that. You have to ignore the, 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 the lies of the enemy and the perversion of truth that we see around us. And let's be godly men and godly women according to the scriptures. That would remove so much stress from our lives and so many problems if we would just take... God, you know, you say, well, it's old fashioned. It's Bible. It's eternal. God's word applies today. And, and the reason we're having problems in the world today in this area is because people haven't applied the word. They're trying to go around the word and they're trying to do things differently than what God has ordained. And it's never going to work. I, I, and I'm not angry. Believe me, I, I, my heart goes out to, to these transgender people. They're, people. they're confused, they're hurting, they're blinded, and, and, and I want to see them fulfilled and saved and changed and, and, and know who they are and discover their true identity. And, and it's not in changing, trying to change who you are on the outside. It's finding out who you are on the inside, having a relationship with Jesus, being born again and finding your true identity in Him. And in that way, you can become the best man or the best woman that you could possibly be. We can't do it outside of the manufacturer's, you know, uh, the, the, the owner's manual, the manufacturer's recommendations. You can't do things differently. He made us. He knows how we can best live our lives, and we ought to take his word for it. So we talked about equality in the, in the kingdom of God. We're all equal. We've talked about equality between men and women, and, 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 and according to God's word, we are totally equal. We ought to be in a, in a contest to see who can give, out-give, out-sacrifice, out-serve the other, and, and, and just see what would happen if we did that, rather than seeing how much can I get out of this, how much can I put into it, and that would change everything. Number three, we have equality in the body of Christ as at large on the earth. Even though there are different gifts, we all have different gifts and talents, we all have equal value in the body. And let me give you a scripture for that. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12, 
It says, for as the body is one and has many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So if you read uh, 1 Corinthians 12, it talks about the body and how many different parts of the body exist. So God's not saying you're all exactly the same. You're equal and you're the same. We may be equal, but we are not the same. And I think the world just has a hard time swallowing that. They see that we're not the same, therefore we are not equal. No, we're equal. We're just not the same. We have different functions. We have different talents. We have different giftings. We have different blessings. We, we have different graces on our life. And, you know, one thing that would make a person miserable is to take somebody and put them in the wrong role, put them in the wrong place, trying to fit a, you know, a square peg in a round hole. You have different gifts. We're, you're not exactly like everybody else. Don't try to be exactly like everyone else. Don't try to do what everybody else does. Find out what you're good at. What, what are your unique characteristics? So we're different, but we are equal. And, and 1 Corinthians 12 recognizes this. There is one body and it has many members. But all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So we make up a body. If we were all the same, we wouldn't make up a body. We would make up an organ. And he gives the examples. Is that the, the, the eye, the, the, the ear can't say to the eye, I don't, I don't need you. Or the eye can't say to the ear, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. Uh, we need each other. We, we don't need to, to, to judge people that aren't like us. So they're, we're different, but we're equal. And then he says in 1 Corinthians 12, 25, he says that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And that's the key, the same care. We may be different, but we have the same care. We have the same value. We are equal across the board. There's no Jew or Greek. There's no bond or free. There's no male or female. We are all sons of God in Christ Jesus. But in the body, we have different qualities, different characteristics. That's not a bad thing. That's not, that's not an evil thing. And it doesn't make one less than the other. The mistake that we make is we notice the differences and we strive to make everybody the same. And, and that's not God's recipe. God celebrates diversity. He said in 1 Corinthians 12, if everybody was an eye, then how would you hear? And if everybody was an ear, then how would you see? So he's saying everybody has different characteristics, but we have the same care, the same value. We all have equal access to the Lord and to the Father, but we have different functions. That's not a curse. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Can you see that? I've got a lot more teaching on this that we'll get into in the weeks to come, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. We'll talk a lot about the body and the different parts of the body and division in the body and how to remedy that. But I wanted to hit on it today because uh, we're talking so much about equality and you hear that all the time. And it is possible if you're in the kingdom to be completely equal and yet be different. And, and that's the that's the, the I think that's the thing that the world cannot seem to get over is that we're different. We are different. You know, I, I use this illustration a lot, but but when I was in my early late 20s and early 30s, Emmett Smith was a star running back for the Dallas Cowboys, and Emmett Smith is a Hall of Famer. He uh, broke all kinds of records, won three Super Bowls. He's a hero. And I was following the Cowboys at the time, and I heard as I was listening or watching one of the games, his stats that he was 5'11 and 185 pounds. Well, I knew I was 5'11", and I ran to the scales to weigh myself, and lo and behold, I'm 185 pounds. I am the same size, height, and weight, and age as Emmett Smith. But did you know my chances of being a Hall of Fame NFL running back are zero? No, I, I, I couldn't take one hit. I would be home in, in my chair covered with ice. I mean, there's just no way. I don't know how... 
one person could have the same body weight and height and be so good at athletics and another person have the exact and be so bad. <laughs> I, could, I could barely make the football team. I was so skinny. Anyway, the, the, the point is we're of equal value as people. I would love to meet Emmett someday. I heard he's a Christian and I would love to shake his hand and, and tell him how much I admired his, his NFL career. But, but you know, the, 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 re, the fact that he could do what he does and I do what I do, we, we are different but equal. God loves his people just the same. We're equal in the body of Christ. We have equal access to the blessings and the inheritance of God, and yet we have different functions. We have different giftings. That's not a bad thing. <laughs> you know, what would Emmett do if everybody was a Hall of Fame running back? He wouldn't even be special anymore. And what would he do if there wasn't people like me that could watch him on TV? And what would I do if, if there were no Emmets, if they were, they were all like me? There wouldn't be any teams that could do anything. We'd all just sit around and pray <laughs> and read our Bibles. <laughs> there wouldn't be any diversity to have anything great or anything different. Diversity is a wonderful thing, but we ought not ex ex uh, confuse it with inequality because it's two different things totally. In the eyes of God, we're all equal. In the eyes of God, we all have value. We need to celebrate that and, you know, find out what role God has put us in, read our lines, do our part, and be the best, the absolute best we can be. And in the end, everybody wins. Well, I hope you got something out of that. We're going to go on in the next teaching, and I'm going to talk about a woman with an attitude. You're going to love it. Can't wait to get there. And until then, may God's best be yours. In this new series, you will learn the keys to getting your joy back and enjoying life, even in these challenging days. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s or watch the streaming videos for free. Greg Fritz Ministries is reaching new people daily with the Word of God online and at conferences. I have never heard of Greg Fritz. I actually never heard of Greg, Greg Fritz before this conference, but he's really funny and I love listening to him. That's what happens in services like this. Oh, you can't see it, but in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit will make sure that we do. We'll be talking about this and talking about that and seeds are going out all over the congregation. And you may have come and said, I need you to do something for me, God. I've got to have my miracle. Well, listen, because it's those who hear that receive. It's those who hear. The Bible says, be careful how you listen. For to those who hear, more will be given. Isn't that an ingenious plan? If you have been encouraged by Greg Fritz Ministries, please partner with us to reach more people with the good news of Jesus. Sorrow, sadness, guilt, and shame are not God's will for your life. In his new book, learn how to apply God's word to your past and allow him to wipe away every tear so you can experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. Get your copy of Greg's new book, Living With No Regrets, on our website, gregfritz.org. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God.